Hello and welcome to this microwave engineering lecture titled Power Dividers and Directional Couplers. In this lecture, we will learn about the basic properties of dividers and couplers. We'll learn about three port networks, four port networks, characterization of directional couplers, and hybrid couplers. Power dividers and directional couplers are passive microwave components user for power division or power combining. In power division, an input signal is divided into two or more output signals of lesser power, while a power combiner accepts two or more input signals and combines them at an output port. The coupler or divider might have three ports, four ports, or more. Now let's look at three port networks. The simplest type of power divider is the T-junction, a three port network with two inputs and one output. Here is the scattering matrix of an arbitrary three port network. It has nine independent elements. If the device is passive and isotropic, it must be a reciprocal and symmetric, which means that SIJ equals SJI. In this case, it is desired to have a junction that is lossless and matched, SII equals zero. If the network is reciprocal and matched, we obtain this matrix. Now, for a network to be lossless, we need to have the following conditions. These six expressions. However, it is impossible to satisfy all of these conditions, so a three-port network cannot be reciprocal, lossless, and matched at all ports. One of these conditions must be relaxed. We can have a matched, lossless, and non-reciprocal three-port network. The scattering matrix of a matched three-port network has this form. If this network is lossless, the scattering matrix must be unitary and implies the following conditions given by these six expressions. The previous set of equations can be satisfied in two ways. Option A or option B. The two cases lead to two possible types of circulators. Circulator A, which is a clockwise circulator with this scattering matrix, and circulator B, which is a counterclockwise circulator with this scattering matrix. Now let's look at four port networks, which describe directional couplers. The scattering matrix of a reciprocal four-port network matched at all ports has this form. For a reciprocal and lossless network, the following conditions also apply. The summation from k equals 1 to n of SKI times the conjugate of SKI equals 1, and the summation from k equals 1 to n of SKI times conjugate of SKJ equals zero for I not equal to J. These conditions leads to a series of 10 equations that are shown here. Now we will do some manipulation with the equations. We multiply equation 5 by conjugate of S24 and equation 10 by conjugate of S13 to obtain these two expressions. We subtract one from another to obtain this expression. Similarly, we multiply equation 6 by S12 and equation 9 by S34 to obtain these two expressions. We also subtract these equations to obtain 
this expression. Now, these pair of equations can be satisfied if S14 equals S23 equals 0, which leads to this scattering matrix. These conditions imply that there is no coupling between ports 1 and 4 and between ports 2 and 3. This results in a directional coupler. With these conditions, now the set of 10 equations reduce to 6. Now, equations 1 and 2 imply that the magnitude of S13 equals the magnitude of S24. And equations 2 and 4 imply that the magnitude of S12 equals the magnitude of S34. We can simplify more by choosing the phase references on three of the four ports. Given this scattering matrix, we can define S12 equals to S34 equal to alpha, S13 equal to beta e to the j theta, and S24 equals to beta e to the j phi. Where alpha and beta are real and theta and phi are phase constants to be determined. Equation 6 leads to this expression. By letting n equal to 0, we can have two choices of couplers. The first choice is a symmetric coupler, in which theta equals phi equals pi over 2. And the phases of the terms having amplitude beta are chosen equal. Then the scattering matrix has this form. The second choice is an antisymmetric coupler in which theta equals zero and phi equals pi. The faces of the terms having amplitude beta are chosen to be 180 degrees apart. And the scattering matrix has the following form. These two couplers differ only in the choice of reference planes, and equation 1 requires that alpha squared plus beta squared equals 1. These are two commonly used symbols for directional couplers. The power supplied to port 1 is coupled to port 3, which is the coupled port, with the coupling factor beta squared equals the magnitude of S13 squared. The remainder of the input power is delivered to port 2, which is the through port. And the corresponding coefficient is alpha squared equals 1 minus beta squared and equals the magnitude of S12 squared. Ideally, no power is delivered to port 4, and that's why it's called the isolated port. Now let's look at some common quantities used to characterize a directional coupler. The first one is the coupling factor C, which is given by 10 log of P1 over P3, and it's also equal to minus 20 log of beta, and it's the fraction of the input power that is coupled to the output port. The directivity D is equal to 10 log P3 over P4, or 20 log of beta over the magnitude of S14, and it's the coupler's ability to isolate the coupled and uncoupled ports. The isolation I is the power delivered to the uncoupled port, and it's equal to the directivity plus the coupling. It's equal to 10 log of P1 over P4, and it's also equal to minus 20 log of the magnitude of S14. Finally, the insertion loss L is equal to 10 log of P1 over P2, 
and equal to minus 20 log of the magnitude of S12. And it's the input power delivered to the through port diminished by the power delivered to the coupled and isolated ports. For ideal couplers, S14 equals zero, and therefore the directivity is infinity. Finally, let's look at hybrid couplers. The hybrid couplers are a special type of couplers where the coupling factor C is 3 dB. There are two types of hybrids. The first type is the quadrature hybrid, which is a symmetric coupler that has a 90 degree phase shift between ports 2 and 3 when fed at port 1, and is given by this scattering matrix. The Magic T hybrid and Rad Race hybrid are antisymmetric couplers that have a 180 degrees phase shift between ports 2 and 3 when fed at port 4, and it's given by this scattering matrix.